Now, the audio tape recorder in MCR21, and please note it's audio, not video. Video is an entirely different bundle of problems. Back to the audio. So it fits in here, and we've yet to make the frame that goes between these two pull-out rails, but when we've made the frame, the deck will fit in there, and the whole thing can be pulled out for threading the and lacing the tape, and then pushed back into the 19-inch rack, so it's tucked away out of the way. When it's ready to be used, there is a switch on the sound desk which actuates the motion. It might be used for leading music, for opening title music, uh, even sound effects, horses hooves, any manner of uh, things. You can also record, perhaps as a backup track for some important occasion. So, here we have the correct Philips EL3503 tape deck which was originally fitted to MCR21. We've been working on it and we're quite pleased with the progress of the deck itself and it will play. Music in the background. We're quite pleased with the deck. Uh, it's a two channel machine, uh, two half tracks in the same direction. So here are the controls on the deck. The first one is the speed control which also doubles as the on off switch. So that's seven and a half inches per second and 15 inches per second. Next is this interesting little one here which pre-positions the pinch wheel onto the capstan. And this enables you to get a much faster start. So uh, here is the play button and away we go. Underneath the cover here we have the erase head, the record head and the replay head. We have the replay head working as you can hear, but we've yet to sort out the signals uh, to the record head and the bias head. More work there. I'm just going to stop it. When it comes to rewind and fast forward it's even more interesting. This switch selects what it's going to do and this switch enables it. So we're rewinding one speed faster and we can go back that way and we're still in rewind but we're going the other direction now or faster or even faster. So I think that's quite a novel feature variable speed rewind. Now we looked at the deck a moment ago and here we have the record replay amplifiers. It's organised as two mono amplifiers uh, completely independent of each other. So there's gain controls for the microphone and line input, a monitoring switch and an interesting little red switch here which when you press it is supposed to indicate the bias current but alas the meter which also measures the audio record level is bust and not only is that one bust its friend on the other one is bust so i have a bad feeling that this is a a, a generic fault at this age after all they are some 60 odd years old it's as you can see a valve amplifier so we have the record amplifier the bass oscillator the replay amplifier and the monitoring amplifier. I can feel a little heat coming off them. I quite like valves, they're ever such fun. So as I said the meters are bust and for testing purposes I've popped my AVO across the meter and if I turn up the gain control you can see that it indicates there as you would hope. So the circuitry is correct, it's just the meters bust. So the connectors on the back are interesting. The thing is 60 odd years old and continental in origin, so for us in the UK it's a bit strange. Here is the mains plug. It's called a Presto. 
You don't see many of these about these days, but curiously, it was used, I think, on flat irons for ironing. I'm hoping to find some more of those as we're two down. It goes back in there, like that. Now we'll have a look at the audio connectors. Here is the main one. Uh, this fella, again, uh, is very strange and uh, rarely, if ever, seen in the UK. But we're very fortunate in able to, being able to find uh, the matching connectors. The tape deck and the amplifiers, of course, came without the connectors. Plug that back in there. The others are a little more standard, that's a, uh, a standard DIN of which we're quite familiar with. But the XLR positions here, there, there and on the other side, the original connectors have been long removed by previous owner and the XLRs substituted. We think that the substitution was actually done as a BBC mod uh, so we're content to leave them in place and not replace them with the originals. That is, if we could find the originals. Now we're in MCR21 and we're going to have a quick look at where the tape recorder rack assembly goes. There's a space here where the rack exactly fits in with about a quarter of an inch to spare all around. And you can learn more about Keith's experiences working on MCR21 by visiting the website and following the links to the February 2021 newsletter.